Welcome to Dear SQL DBA, a podcast for and about SQL Server DBAs. I'm Kendra Little. This week's question is about collecting wait stats for performance monitoring. Here's the question. Dear SQL DBA, I'm getting into performance troubleshooting SQL Server. I hear you talk about wait stats a lot and how important they are to the process of troubleshooting. What ways are there to check the wait stats for a given time? How would you go about creating a baseline for a system that you've just taken over? Sincerely, waiting on stats. Well, you're right. I really do love wait stats. If you listen to the performance tuning episode that I did called Lost in Performance Tuning, I talk a lot about how critical wait stats are to troubleshooting an issue and diagnosing what is causing a performance problem in SQL Server. Wait stats are a fantastic view into literally what is SQL Server waiting on. So this is about the practical side of that. I list a couple of scripts in that episode, but I didn't really talk about my preferences about what I would do to collect wait stats. So I'll share with you today in this episode, if I'm gonna manage a system, Really, what's the best way I think to collect those wait stats? Now, my personal preference, if I'm gonna manage a system for a long time, whether it's a long-term consulting basis, or if I was a DBA who just joined a job, I would want to buy a vendor monitoring tool that collects wait stats. SQL Server is a pretty mature product. This is great news for us because it means there's a pretty rich base of vendors who have figured out what tools can really help people solve problems with their SQL servers. Where are the places where people need data collected from the SQL server and what data like those wait stats and long running queries, what, which parts of that data are really useful to DBAs for performance tuning? So there are vendors in the marketplace who have honed tools that collect wait stats in a lightweight manner. How can we get those out of the SQL Server without slowing it down? How can we store them in a repository and make them available you know, elsewhere aside from the SQL Server? And also, if we have all this data being collected and building up over time, what are the ways that we can groom it so you still have aggregate data for maybe six months ago or nine months ago, but maybe not, you can configure how much detail you wanna keep for a long time. They build reports for you to look at and compare data. They let you customize those reports sometimes. And they also build really useful graphical interfaces so that you can go back in time and say, what were the wait stats at 3 p.m. last Thursday when I was at the dentist? And, okay, if those wait stats look concerning, how can I jump to the queries that were running at the same time and try to tie these together to move even farther in the process? So these vendors, the great thing for you as a DBA is the vendors compete against one another they are not all one big company, so they have to compete on being able to do these things efficiently and effectively, as well as on price, right? So that's pretty fantastic. I'm gonna list three vendors that I have personally used their products to solve problems in SQL Server. I've used SQL Sentry's tools for performance. I've used Idea's tools for performance. And I've used Dell Software's, formerly Quest, Spotlight on SQL Server Enterprise for performance as well, and solved a lot of problems with those three tools. I know DBAs who are major fans of each of those companies and people, I know at least, you know, <laughs> a lot of people, I'm like, I don't want to say the amount, like this would get into the accounting a little too close there. I, I know multiple people who would swear that each of these products was better than the others. I, I clearly don't work for any of these vendors, right? Since it's a mature market, a lot of the, the core things that people want are in many of the products and a lot of the details between the products are different. So depending on what your application is like, what your team is like, and what your process is like, 
one of these tools may fit you better than the other tools, right? So it is preference based on, on real things. Now, there is a perception out there that DBAs should write their own tools. I, I ran into this recently in a, in a chat room where someone, and it may have been kind of a joke, was saying, if you're a legitimate DBA, you should be able to just, you know, use the built-in stuff and solve problems. And this is kind of one of those philosophies of you should be a self-made person and you should build your own house. I didn't build my own house. I've written a lot of tools to script things out of SQL Server. I love writing T-SQL. I, I love being part of a team that builds dashboards. There's plenty of room to build customized application level monitoring for your product without redoing all the work that vendors have built in collecting these weight stats. Using a vendor tool to collect and analyze performance data isn't gonna cover everything you need in monitoring in a dashboard because you've got stuff that's really specific to your own environment and your own applications. There's, there's still plenty of room for you to write a custom code. And when it comes to monitoring SQL servers, it's really easy to slow down the very system that you're trying to help performance on. I have done this myself. Vendors who build tools have accidentally put things in that have slowed the system down. The difference is when one of these vendors who builds a tool, when they have a regression in their product, they've got a whole team of engineers to fix it and quickly get a new version available. If you write a tool that slows down your SQL server, once you recognize what you've accidentally done, you're gonna have to turn it off for a long time before you fix it. So I really think that it's, only worth it to for you to write custom code solutions for those things that there isn't really something already written for it and there's still going to be plenty of those don't don't worry about it i really think that vendor monitoring tools these days are a little bit like a a heart rate monitor so for my personal life i really love having information about how active i am throughout the day and when i'm exercising where is my heart rate getting to? I don't need a high level of precision, but I really like having the data. So I bought and wear a heart rate monitor. And I really, I love the data and the reports that it gives me. Now, and there's different, you know, I did went through the process. There's different vendors who make these. Some are chest straps, some are wrist uh, bands. They have different levels of accuracy and, you know, lots of, lots of things about them. I, I could have just learned to sample my own heart rate manually and I could have built myself a little tool, even a little phone app to record my data into. I could have built this solution myself from sort of more raw software materials and just, you know, my own body. But for me, it was just much more convenient to say, hey, this, there's a, a reasonably priced device I can buy and I like the look of the, the metrics they give me. They, they even give me access for a cost to download my own heart rate data if I want to really get deep into analyze that. And to me, it was a no brainer that that's worth it to me. It doesn't make me, I don't think it makes me less of a, uh, you know, a healthy person to, to wear someone else's device. I don't think it makes you less of a DBA to not write all your own tools. There is the question of paying for it, of course, right? How do I get budget for this monitoring tool? Well, the first thing I would do is outline the business cases that the performance monitoring tool would help you solve. The more specifically that you can link to user tickets and real incidents that have happened in your environment, the better. And pick, look at, look at the vendor tools out there, pick the top two or three that you think look like they would help you solve those problems. Write that up and take that when you discuss it with your boss about here is what I would like to do a trial of, of these tools. Here's roughly what they cost. And here are the business cases that I think they would help us solve. I think they would have helped us solve these problems more efficiently. And they'll let us know if these problems come back. These tools pretty much all offer free trials. 
When you do a free trial, start outside of production first and only test one at a time because Anything, it's a little a little like uh, what's with the principle that if you monitor something, you're going to impact it. It's a little bit like that. In order to collect data from something, we are gonna impact it a little bit. So start on a non-production server and simulate performance problems against that non-production server. You can find sample code on the internet to simulate blocking and deadlocks. I have actually a, a post on, if you search Kendra Little uh, load testing or Kendra Little race condition insert, that's it, in, it's insert race conditions. I have a blog post where I use Microsoft's free ostress.exe tool to load test a bunch of different insert commands. That's gonna generate some weight stats for you. You can play around with the code there. You can write your own queries that read a lot of data and potentially run those with OStress, maybe hook them up in a SQL agent job. Look, generate some performance problems against that server that you've got the test monitoring system running against. And then look in the UI. What do the weight stats look like for the different things you simulated? Can you see in the monitoring tool what was going on that you set up? Does it line up or not? If things are looking weird to you, reach out to the vendor and say, hey, I'm, I'm doing an evaluation of your project or your product. I can use a little help interpreting this. It'll give you a view of how their support works. And sometimes it's not obvious how to do things in these tools. Sometimes their capabilities are richer than it appears and you, you need to learn how to navigate a little bit. The, the user, I don't wanna say the user interfaces aren't intuitive, but but I just said that. <laughs> but the great thing about these vendors is that they do have folks who will help you figure out how to navigate places or just let you know if you're reaching something that isn't covered. But, but most of the time there is a way to do a lot of these things in the tool. So um, use their support, which is free when you're doing a, a trial, which is fantastic. One thing I would look at whenever evaluating a tool, more and more often, the tools send data to the cloud. And this can be very cool because they can tell you things like, how normal are the weight stats you're seeing when compared to other SQL servers out in the wild? What you just wanna know is for each of these tools, are they sending data to the cloud? And is that okay with your business? If, if Make sure to get that signed off on, especially uh, if you work in any environment where the data is sensitive, if you're at all not sure, check it out. And before you even, you know, do the trial on a place with a restored database from production, be clear on, is it going to send data out to the cloud? And is that is that cool with our business owners? You could always work with your networking team to say, hey, I want to make sure that internet access isn't enabled on these test servers so that I can really see how it works if it's not able to radio home if that is a concern in your environment, right? So just kind of be aware that for, for good reasons and cool reasons, more and more vendors want to collect information about your weight stats, not about necessarily the data in your system itself, but different companies have different rules about whether or not that's okay. Now, you can't always buy a monitoring system. Right? I've said if it was me and I was gonna work with a system long term and baseline weight stats, this is what I would want. But sometimes the situation just doesn't fit that. So in my past, I've done a lot of short term consulting where I need to go in and I need to diagnose a problem. And there is not time to test and install this long term solution for baselining weight stats. Some folks also just don't have the budget. Maybe you work for a nonprofit. Maybe there are just real reasons why you can't get these systems for your SQL servers, or, or maybe you can only get it for one or two of the SQL servers. In that case, I really think finding an open source set of tools that collects weight stat samples that you can use what's already published and then contribute to it also, I think that is the best bet. And Essentially, why start from scratch if you can start with an already existing open source project. So SP Blitz first, 
is a stored procedure from the folks at Brent Ozar Unlimited, who, who I used to work with, right? So I'm clearly biased to think that this is, I've used this tool before, I think it's great. It is now an open source stored procedure. So you can download it from GitHub, you can contribute to the project, you can say, hey, I'm gonna get used to the features it has now, and then figure out features that would help me and contribute in those features to it. SP Blitz First uh, has some documentation to get you started already. People are currently building more features into it. It already has the ability to sort of run for a certain sample time, collect data and write it to a table. So some of that basic sampling functionality is there. And it also has some analysis in there to look at running query and traits about the system that might be related to the wait stats you see, is a backup running, things like that. Um, it will also point out when some wait stats are really unusual and give you some analysis of that. So a bit easier than writing all your own code from scratch. And I love the fact now that you can contribute to it and, and help make it the product that works well for you too. Now this is long-term more work than buying a product and, and just analyzing the data. It's kind of a like an open source heart rate monitor that you can tinker around with too. But if you can't, you know, install something in a system long-term or you don't have the budget to buy something, it can be a fantastic option. So these are my thoughts on collecting wait stats in SQL Server. If you have a different opinion on this, if you say, no, I actually really do think you should build your own monitoring tools for these reasons, I would love to hear about it actually in the comments of my blog. Just let me know, hey, what's your experience and why has it really made a difference to you to roll your own? Or if there's a particular product that you're really passionate about and you wanna tell people, hey, no, this one's the best of that, that is actually totally okay too. Hit, hit up the blog post on uh, littlekendra.com and let me know all about it. Thank you for joining me for Dear SQL DBA. I'm Kendra Little and I'll see you again next week.